G'day and welcome to the Grow Small Business Podcast. I'm your host, Troy Truen. Each week, we speak with an owner who has grown a business with 5 to 30 team members to something bigger. Diving into their numbers and unearthing the pain they've experienced, we explore what they did to overcome each barrier and what they would do differently from day one. Let's get into it. Well, Sally, uh, thanks so much for making the time to catch up. Like I was saying, uh, I think you're an ideal guest for this podcast, given your (laughs) focus is primarily on helping businesses grow. But um, why don't I start off by throwing it over to you to give us a little bit of a brief introduction into who you are and, and what you do. Tell us a bit more about yourself. Yeah, absolutely. I uh, My name is Sally Arias. That's a nickname for Maria Celia because that's a mouthful and that always trips people up. So Sally, like your cell phone. And I always tell people I've been in business for over 25 years and they're always like, yeah, right. And I'm like, yeah, really? I started my first business when I was 11. <laughs> and it was a very serious business to me. I really wanted to study ballet and my parents couldn't really afford it and weren't aligned with it. So I was this kind of kid, which I think most entrepreneurs are when we see a problem or see something we want to do or fix, we're just like, oh, I'll just do it myself. Right. So I was like, well, I'm just going to make my own money and sign myself up. And that's what I did. And I um, ran a babysitting and nannying service from middle school through all the way through high school, it paid for dance, paid for my first car. Uh, paid my way through college and um, I became a professional dancer. That was my first degree. I have four degrees. Um, So I think my love of entrepreneurship and just solving problems myself came early on and is just a part of how I'm wired. Um, Then in my 20s, I went to Argentina to study fashion design. I saw an opportunity in a niche market because I was dancing tango for fun And I started a clothing line, again, kind of just for fun, but my spin on taking my, what I understood from the US of active wear and like sports bras and sports wear and putting it into dresses and infusing productivity and like fancy clothes. So this was, I am that old. This was before athleisure was a a word and (laughs) it was a thing. Um, That kind of took off with a certain demographic and I created a brand Um, and I had a clothing line for almost 10 years. Uh, And I always say I made every single mistake in the book in that business, which I think you do in your first like serious business. So I did what most entrepreneurs do, which is I went and got an MBA thinking I must not know enough and I must not be smart enough. So there's something I don't know. And I went and wasted my money and my time and got an MBA that just don't do it, guys. Don't do it. It's not actually going to help you be a better entrepreneur. It will help you climb the corporate ladder if that's your goal, but it's not really for entrepreneurs. Um, But over the years, I've worked in startups, worked in corporate sales, went back to startups, fell in love with operations and systems became a COO of tech startups and started getting tapped on the shoulder by other companies or friends to coach them or consult with them. And eventually I grew um, two startups to multi seven figures. And then somebody tapped on my shoulder and said, you should apply for this head coaching job with these guys. So I got into coaching um, and business coaching. And that's kind of how I got into What is the system and mechanism for growing a business? Because it can take you 10 years, like it did my first time, but it can also take you a lot less if you understand the mechanism of business. And ironically, if you go get an MBA, that's not what you're going to learn. So I'm very passionate about kind of, I think I'm an engineer at heart. I mean, that's why I loved making fashion because I liked putting pieces together I like building the machine. I like engineering your business with you and for you. And I, and I do think there's that saying that business is business is business, but I also think that every business is unique. Yeah. Every business deserves its own strategy because you probably have a business and you want it to do different things than I'm doing with my business in the world. So you deserve to understand the rules of business, how it works, how to play the game, 
And then you understand how to play that game to build a business for your life and your goals. And that's what I'm really passionate about teaching people. Yeah, I think that's a great way to put it. Um, so tell me, who who is your target customer these days? Who, who do you most uh, enjoy working with? And what is it that brings them to you? Do they have a particular pain point or, or are there particular types of problems that you're best at solving? Yeah, I think I wish this wasn't true, but <laughs> I'm, there's a particular problem that I'm good at solving. I wish it wasn't this problem, but kind right. of like when I started my fashion line, I was 23 and I thought I was going to make super cool clothes for the cool kids. And I thought I was going to be dressing the 23 to 27 year olds but I actually ended up dressing women who were 55 and up. And I thought, this is crazy. Like, what do I know about a 55 year old woman's body? <laughs> this makes no sense. But I had engineered clothes to fit their bodies to be flattering because I had body issues and they're the ones with money, right? Good so point. much like in business, I realized that the problem I help, I wish I wasn't the truth, but I'm really good at the frustrated six-figure person, <laughs> right? The one who's okay. like, unfortunately, you've been burned by some coaches. You've been burned by some cookie-cutter programs. You've tried a lot of the hacks. You, you have a bunch of courses sitting on your desktop that you've never touched. You've paid a lot of money. You've tried a lot of things. And now you're like, gosh, darn it. Like, I want this to work and I can't seem to get past this number. So when you're at that place of like, am I just relegated to being at 300K, 500K forever? Am I just stuck there? Is that just the business I've built? That's my sweet spot. Um, I wish it wasn't because I get like frustrated, angry people, you know, who are like, if you aren't <laughs> a coach, like I'm gonna, cause they're like always on the edge of, you yeah, know. Yeah, interesting. But, yeah. Okay. So you're working with business owners who are potentially stuck and feeling frustrated. So is there is there a typical process that you take these clients through or is it different for every client? There is a process now. I created a methodology. It's called getting ahead in business methodology, but I for fun, because I'm cheeky, I call it the grown ass business method. Yeah. You're ready to oh, have a grown it. ass business. Um, there is a methodology because I found after working with hundreds of businesses, even my seven figure clients and my multi seven figure clients have certain gaps. So I got curious why do even my seven figure clients have certain gaps in their business? And I created this methodology to fill for those gaps. Um, so I do walk people through this method one, because our nervous systems and our brains like a process, right? If I just start coaching you and I'm like, Hey, Rob, like, tell me what's going on. And I kind of solve it, but I didn't show my work. Right. And you don't know how I solved it, but you go and do this thing and it kind of works and you don't understand it. I've actually not helped you. Yeah. I understand. Right. So what I, what I created was a method that I actually teach people how business works. So the way I always talk about it, there's, I think about it like this, like you wouldn't go onto a soccer field or a football field if you are from South America and expect to play like Messi, right? You wouldn't, yeah, no, I mean, as much as we don't like to, right? You just, <laughs> but you, you wouldn't do that. Um, you you'd sign up for classes, you'd learn the drills, you'd, you'd dribble the ball, you do the skills, you learn the tools, you get a coach, you, you practice, you put yourself in tournaments, like you do all these things. But when we start a business, for some reason, we put all this pressure on ourselves to succeed and to prove ourselves to everyone. And I think because our self-worth is involved and money is involved, mm -hmm. we put all this pressure on ourselves to just magically know. It's a good point what are the mechanics of business and how does a business grow and how does it work? So that's why we are so susceptible to a lot of the shiny object, like, you know, YouTube is the thing or TikTok is the thing now, or here's how to get leads or like, that's why we're susceptible to all this stuff. Cause we feel so much pressure to succeed. So I teach a methodology, which is all about understanding that 
what got you to your 200K or 300K, that invisible ceiling that you're feeling, what got you there is your strengths, leaning into your strengths, right? You have a particular skill. You're probably good at one of the five key departments in business and you created something and you have a strength. That's amazing. That's stellar. What gets you past that invisible ceiling, because it is invisible, is actually now opening up the blinders and learning the other departments of business that you need to have a full ecosystem of business, if you will. So um, the way I create a visual for this so that we can understand what I'm talking about is imagine that your business is run by five heads of department. Even if you don't have those five people, you hopefully you have a CEO and they have particular responsibilities. Hopefully you have a COO. They have very specific responsibilities and duties. Hopefully you have a CFO, a CMO, and a CRO. Chief Revenue Officer, I consider like head of sales, right? Each of these are departments that have very, very key responsibilities and metrics. And a lot of times you're coming to that table, you're most likely sitting in one seat. Right. So like, Rob, which seat do you feel like you're really good in? Uh, well, personally, I've probably always had a bias towards the operations. Yeah, me too. So as an operations person, do you find it difficult to sometimes let go of fixing the systems and building the systems and having to get out of that seat and be the CEO? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm a COO too. I was a COO for many years and I love it. And that being the leader and the visionary and letting go and letting things be imperfect is not my strength. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do is actually teach people how do we, I don't think you need to be an expert at all of them. I think you need to understand them as systems and what are the key responsibilities. If you had a CEO, a COO, if you had a CFO, what numbers do they own? What do they understand about numbers? What are the key numbers that they own and they're reporting to you every week? And I've built a methodology that teaches you all of that. And I'm building, I have software that kind of walks you through all of that. So you start to run your business as not just maybe just the COO. A lot of people are really good at marketing, right? They think that they're just going to grow their business by doing more marketing, more ads, more cool content, right? But it's like, if you don't have the other departments built, we all know what that what happens? You might grow to a certain point, but then it all crumbles because there's no foundation underneath any of that, right? Um, so that is the method is like, how do we build out that table? Well, without overwhelming you and burning you out and making you hate your life, right? So each seat, it's like, what are the minimum viable things that each seat really owns and understands? And then you have yourself a full grown ass business. Yeah, nice. I like, like the idea of a grown-ass business. Um... <laughs> Do you find it difficult to define and execute a clear strategy for your small business? Does your team support your strategy? You know you are ready to create the right environment to boost your team's performance. Our 90-day business transformation program is designed for small business owners like you, with 5 to 30 team members who are ready for growth. Every day, you'll receive a short email with a handful of growth actions. You'll invest 30 minutes each week in your one-on-one -on -one coaching session, tackling your specific growth challenges with one of our experienced growth guides, business owners themselves. Boost your confidence, your team's performance, and grow your small business with ease with our business transformation program at growsmallbusiness.com. Can you give us a bit of a case study of maybe one or two clients that you've worked with and I guess bring that to life a little bit? What it, what does it look like when clients are working with you? Yeah, so um, let's give, I'll give you an example of a physical product client first and then a service-based client Beautiful. Uh, so we can see what are some scenarios. So let's say physical product um, client she actually has a brand called Cannibal. She has a part-time job because she hasn't been able to get this physical product to go beyond a certain point. She's doing a lot of the fulfillment herself. It's very specific. She has some growth opportunities, but she's shied away from even certain conversations and partnerships because wow. she doesn't understand the numbers of her business well enough to even have these conversations. So she came to me 
actually saying, this is my last straw. I'm thinking of shutting down. And, and is, and she actually asked this on a group call and it was a beautiful moment where she's like, when is it okay to throw in the towel? Mm, wow. Powerful said, question. Super powerful, you know? And I was like, Oh, thank you so much. I think everyone needs to hear this. And I think every entrepreneur thinks this and doesn't ask it out loud. So thank you for asking this. And I said, let's make a deal with everything that I'm teaching you to think through. Now that you know, all these pieces, give yourself a year. You still hate it, still not working. You give yourself a deadline, you give yourself a timeline, and then you let yourself throw in the towel. But what was interesting about her case was we, I got her to understand pricing strategy, profitability of products. So what was the pricing strategy around each product? Which product had a really low margin that she could re remove from her offerings? So we did, we changed her pricing, we changed her products. She started to understand her cash flow. She understand she understood the margins on her pricing. She understood that packaging in the US was one of the most expensive things. So basically, I got this super creative person who's intuitive. This product is for animals. She's, you know, wasn't having a lead flow problem necessarily. She just didn't understand the business mechanics of pricing and numbers. Once she understood the numbers, Again, this country, this uh, company from Asia reached out to her right after my course. And they were like, we want to have a conversation again about manufacturing your product in Asia. And she was like, okay, I'm ready for the conversation. And she came back and told me I was in this, she said, I was in this meeting with all these Japanese men who tried to, in the past, treat me like I didn't know anything about business. But this time I was able to sit at the table and go, no, 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 these are my margins. I know it's super valuable. I know these are my margins if I just do the packaging here. Like she owned the conversation. She's now quit her part-time job. Her products are selling overseas. And every time I see her on Instagram, she's on some like horseback riding trip through like the, the Rockies somewhere in Arizona. I'm like, what are you doing in the world? <laughs> um, and she said... It was just that, like that was the missing seat for her. She just didn't have any confidence around her numbers. So she couldn't go to meetings as the full owner and say, no, wait, no, that doesn't make sense. That makes sense. These are my numbers, right? Owning the numbers allowed her to do this partnership that has her product being sold globally and she's having a good old time. Yeah, isn't that so powerful seeing people understand their numbers and look it's one of the things we do at grow a small business one of our sort of lead products is a detailed financial model and we work with our clients to help them build out that financial model um, which really helps them I guess lift the lid on what are the numbers that drive this business and obviously the financial numbers are important but also some of those key operational numbers what does that actually mean from an activity point of view. Um, yeah. so it's so interesting hearing you talk about the impact that can have on a client um, and the confidence it can give them to, to have better conversations when they really understand, you know, what are the numbers that are driving this business and why is that important to me? So um, no, I appreciate that. Yeah. I always say to my clients, when we go through this methodology, I always say, look, there is going to be some lessons and exercises and some of the tools we use in the software that you're going to roll your eyes at me and you're going to say, Ugh, I know this. <laughs> and I'm going to be like, awesome, good. That's probably not your blind spot. Like if yeah. I were to talk to you about operations and KPIs inside operations, you'd be like, Sally, please, you're boring me to tears. I do this better than you, right? <laughs> and I'd be like, don't worry, Rob, when we get to product market fit and marketing and messaging and positioning, you are going to be like, oh, holy crap. Yeah. It's about Good filling point. in those seats, right? So I always say like, there's going to be a session where you're rolling your eyes at me. Don't worry. I can handle it. I can take the heat. And there's going to be a session where you're going to be like, oh, I feel called out right now. And that's what it means to run a whole business. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Is that we're willing, if we're willing to have that awareness and we're willing to go, oh yeah, I suck at that. And if I want to get past this 300 K mark or this 500 K mark, I got to be willing to look at that. Because I may not have the budget yet to hire a high-end person for that seat. Uh, another case study, this is like one of my, um, I, have two, I have a lot of service provider clients that I just love. 
but I love, I have a particular client right now in my advanced program and I just love her because she's like, I don't know, whenever I'm around you, I make more money. So I just have to stay in your, <laughs> I love that. And I'm like, of course yeah. my ego loves that. But the truth is that, you know, getting focused on what it is you need to be doing at the right time is like the secret to success, yes. right? So she is, what I find ironic about her is that she is um, a rev ops consulting agency. At first she was solo. When she came into me, we decided to make her an agency, like get her a bunch of people that help her. But she's actually an expert marketer, a, a person who knows how to go into big companies and optimize their marketing departments and the way they're using HubSpot and Salesforce and tools to make sure that they're doing marketing that the data is telling them was working. That's so she problem. actually understands marketing in a way that makes people more money. So like bigger companies who the, the marketing departments, their, their problem is always they have to prove their ROI and it's really hard to prove their ROI to a CEO. She helps marketing departments do that. So right. let's say that. Here's okay. why it's ironic. When she did my program, when we got to the marketing segment, she had this big light bulb moment where she's like, oh my God, I'm not doing any of this most basic stuff for myself in my own business. Isn't that hilarious? So even the, in her strength, because the way I break down marketing is I intentionally make it super basic. Um, she was like, uh, yeah, I'm not doing that. So a few weeks later go by and she gets featured, you know, she's like blowing up on LinkedIn and she got asked to teach for the NASDAQ and then she got featured in some magazine and she's a client of mine at the time. And so I was like, Stacy, yo, like what, what is going on? What are you blowing up? And she's like, what do you mean? I'm literally taking your advice. I went all in on one channel and got, we did the messaging work. We did the positioning work. We did the product market fit work. And I'm going super all in on my one messaging and my one channel and being super consistent in one place. And yeah, people are like asking me how I blew up on LinkedIn. And she was like, I just got laser focused and did what you said to do. And that was like a big blow to me because I was like, what are you doing over there? How are you getting all this attention? She's like, I literally took your advice. Yeah. Right. Um, so sometimes it's just this, the, when we are very smart and very skilled, we're just doing a lot and doing too much. And we're not actually focusing in on the strategy that's going to move us forward. Yeah. Um, yeah. She's crushing it. Yeah. We, I mean, we also changed her pricing structure and her business model structure, but her just going all in on one channel. She's also a mom of toddlers. So she's busy. Yeah. So she got, about laser focus and she's laser like focus, yeah. she, tripled, she tripled her revenue this year right. from last year fantastic yeah. so if there's one thing that our listeners should take away from this conversation what would you suggest that is <laughs> one thing that's the funny yeah. so this is why <laughs> I, I call my this question <laughs> uh, it's why i name my newsletter just one thing because there's never just one <laughs> correct but the one thing is you have to understand that growth happens in a specific order, right? You don't walk out onto the field like Messi. You don't walk onto the basketball court like Jordan. Like they worked to get there. So growth happens in order. And a lot of times you're slowing down the potential of your growth because you're focused on the wrong things. So right point. Easier, easier said than done. Um, so one of the things that you can do, what's an actionable, because I'm an action person, is when you are thinking about something a lot or obsessing about something a lot, ask yourself, is this the right problem to focus on right now? So I'll give you an example. I just read this in threads the other day and I was like, this, this is the thing I'm always talking about. This is amazing. And I need to find the person who wrote this thread. So this guy who was like number 30 at Facebook and he was bitter when he got fired, but he's like a famous entrepreneur now. He talks about some of the key things he learned from Zuckerberg at Facebook early on was Zuckerberg has decided that their goal early on was growth. In like big bold letters, that was their number one goal was just growth. Um, so they would have these team meetings all the high ups executives and 
you know, people would be like, oh my God, we're not profitable. We're not profitable. We're losing money. We're not making money. And they'd be like, we need to make some product really. We need to make a game or make some product or do something to like be profitable, to show profitability. This is early on first few years. Right. And he was like, one question, does it get us to the goal of growth? What he meant by growth was more people, right? Yeah. Audience size. You wanted yeah. more users before turning on the, the revenue knob. Right. Um, and and people would be like, oh, oh my God, what's wrong with you, dude? We're not profitable. Aren't you hearing us? And he was like, remember, number one goal, growth. Does it get us growth? And I'm not a fan of Zuckerberg, but once I heard this story, I was like, I have a little more respect for you because that kind of discipline as an entrepreneur, especially when you have a lot of people telling you, you need to be doing this and you need to be doing that. You, you know, you have a lot of voices in your head and people yeah. in your ear it's hard to say, we have one goal. Does that thing you're worried about right now, if we were to do that, does it get us to growth? So that's, and I think that's a really good illustration of, um, we might start a Monday going, okay, this week I'm gonna, mm, and by Thursday, we're doing five other things that right. are completely irrelevant <clears throat> to this quarter's goal or focus, right? Yeah. Um, and I think that's the thing is like, is the thing you're obsessing about right now? Is it, did you, you saw somebody blow up on TikTok? So you're like, shoot, I got to go viral. Wait, 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 is going viral and figuring that problem out, is that gonna actually, does that tie back to your seven figure goal that you're trying to hit mm -hmm. this year or whatever the thing is? Because a lot of times we get distracted by the wrong problem. Yeah. I think that's a really good point and it's common with a lot of business owners and entrepreneurs that we see something shiny and we want to jump over to that shiny thing, but it's not always going to move the needle when it comes to some of those key metrics or drivers as to what's going to make our business successful. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So totally. Tell me if, um, if this conversation has resonated with our audience, um, what's the best way to reach out to you or find out a bit more about the work that you do? Um, well, if you want to just talk to me directly, I'm on all my socials. It's me. There's no like team behind it. So if you ever want right. to chat with me, you can find me on social media at um, Selly Grows Business. So C-E-L-I Grows Business on Instagram or TikTok or YouTube. Um, or you can like check out my website, which is obviously called Grown Ass Business. <laughs> awesome. No, I appreciate yeah. it. Well, Sally, thank you so much for your time. That was uh, that was awesome. And like I say, very relevant to uh, to the audience that we're speaking to. So thanks again. Yeah, I'm so glad. Thanks for having me. Want to help other small business owners improve their business? There's one quick thing you can do, which is jump over to iTunes and leave a review. Or if you don't have an account, follow us on Spotify.